Hey, hey, Shine Honors. Welcome to another edition of Shot of Espresso. Uh, today, Jim Carella will be your host, and I am going to spend the day showing you just how hard it is to sell one of Shine Honors products. And I laugh because y'all had weeks to get ahead of me on this stuff. Um, so let's, let's get into it. So in case you didn't know, I've been working really, really hard in the background and building out uh, resource page for you guys. It's it's a shineon.com forward slash resources. It gives you everything that I can possibly come up with to give you uh, in your mission to be a great Shine On seller. Message card layout resources. This is kind of, uh, I sent this out, gosh, six weeks ago now. Uh, just a, a regular, here's a Google Drive folder. And now I made it look a little bit prettier and a little bit more robust. Um, you'll see that we have our best practice guides here, uh, as well as seasonal guides. So right now we have uh, Father's Day, and I will be doing one for wedding season as soon as I wrap up the Father's Day uh, stuff. Okay, so uh, for those of you who pay attention to Shot of Espresso every single week, you will have seen some of this stuff before. So going into message card layout resources, you'll go to this page here, and it looks oddly uh, familiar. This I built out just for this particular page. These are our two best layouts. So as far as um, how you should lay your cards out for if you're doing message card stuff, this is how we sh you should do it. Uh, this I gave you, this is not out of um, my opinion. This is all based on sales. So these are your best selling background colors of all time on Shine On. So it's this uh, gold, uh, sort of like old papyrus looking colored, uh, scroll, if you will, sky blue, white, navy blue, black charcoal, and on down the line. And I gave you all of these templates that are now accessible by clicking here. So if you go here, I took um, my own advice because I wanted to test some Father's Day products. So I was like, let me see if the stuff I gave out for free actually is worth anything. So I took this background design, which again is freely available off of clicking. You click, click here. And this loads up here. And then these you've had access to now for six weeks. Like I gave these out six weeks. These are the best selling colors by uh, color rank, if you will. Um, so I chose this one, black background two. That's what it looks like. So I took that background. And then I went to the Father's Day resources page, which looks like so. That's what the Father's Day resources looks like. And I watched this video, which I posted um, two weeks ago. So four weeks ago, I told you about message cards. And two weeks ago, I showed you about uh, this Father's Day video, okay? And in this video, I talked about this particular phrase on this particular Canvas product. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna take this background and this phrase and make this product. See that again, dad, for all the times that I forgot to thank you for all the special things you do for all the words that sometimes go unspoken. I need to say, I love you. Message card background template. That phrase, all I did different was add this little icony thing of where a dad's taken all of his pieces and given them to his son, to my dad. For all the times that I've forgotten to thank you for all the special things you do. For all the words that sometimes go unsaid, I want to say, I love you. Love your son. Now, message card template. Which template is this? That would be this one on the right. Okay? So that's my product. And then took my message card and I put it on one of the open work watches because we announced that a little over a week ago and I wanted to see if we could sell this new product. So I made this. This is our new product that I've been running traffic to for a little over a week now. Actually, it's right around a week. So this is our product page. You can see that this is the standard rendered image thing. The big call out here is this template is a little bit different than our default. This is um, variable. So if I change the price and it goes to 45, this would change to 45. Um, we are working on being able to make this product template publicly available for everyone. Uh, so stay tuned. In the interim, here's the key component besides the buy box. 
it's this on the product description i've added the phrase so type out your phrase in your product description i then found this video in the Canto folder, we give access to you all. So you have access to all these things. If you don't want to put the video here, put a, a really nice picture of just the watch. Or I would put someone wearing the watch, which again is in the Canto folder. So here's a fun little video of the watch showing it move. Super cool. And then this is the standard description, product description. But I made it to where each sentence is its own thing so sentence space space sentence space space and i broke it up then i decided to highlight the message card so that if they're having a hard time seeing it here all i got to do is scroll down and they'll be able to see the message card up close and personal and then again same thing product description product description and then a really cool up close picture of the watch followed by product specs now if i had an image in Canto or in our rendering engine when you upload new products. If I had an image that was rendered, so like our Love Knot has this, and a few of our other big necklaces do, they actually have the product specs called out on this image. And that's what I would put here as this image. So this is the product page that we're using, which ultimately led to me running tests on Facebook. And this is what they look like. I did, these are all broad. All of the ones that I ran are broad. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can make this. I think that is small. Sorry, I can't make my face any smaller. Uh, I'll move it as we talk. So we've got all broad. So what does that look like? What does it just, what does it look like? We have our ad set. So one campaign, campaign budget was $50. You can see this was a, a pretty good scale and I ended up just killing it because I, Decided that I would rather, I don't really have time to actively manage this. The purpose of this was to show you that it'll work. Um, but you can see our standard testing budget here was at $50. Okay. Okay. So then we had one sale here. Um, later on, I tried scaling up to, uh, actually, it was up to $1,000 and it didn't do as well. So I bumped it back down to $250. Uh, so I went really aggressive on this to see how aggressive could we get on our scale. Again, if I can find the info, I will let you know it. All right, so the budget on testing was $50, one campaign. So this, should, this when we start testing, is $50. Highest volume uh, or value as the campaign bid strategy. Ad set. Website. Pixel purchase event. Schedule the following day that you set the ad up to 6.30 Eastern time. Who would I target? Women, 1865. Why? Because this version of the product was to dad from daughter. Okay, so I had a couple of different angles, a couple of different products that I tested. What does the ad look like? Jim, if only you would show me what the ad looks like, then all of my problems would be solved. Okay, I'll show you the ad. This is the ad. Looking for the perfect gift for your dad? Get 50% off. Click shop now. And then guess what? You shop now and it goes right there. No further than this. Hold on. Looking for that perfect gift for your dad? Look no further than this. With this beautiful message to my dad. For all the times that I've forgotten to thank you. For all the special things you do. For all the words that sometimes go unsaid, I want to say, I love you. Love your daughter. Look at this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, open work, skeleton wash, fully automatic, no battery involved, heavy duty, 100% crystal dome, full grain, black leather band, and it comes in this absolutely gorgeous gift box. LED light to make it nice and bright, even in the lowest of lights. Perfect gift for the perfect dad. Look at that movement. Again, if you're looking for a great gift for your dad, you can't get much better than this one. All right. So that's your ad video. The difference between this ad video and other ad videos that I've done is I split it. So you can see this was a minute long ad. Let me move me up over here so I can play with the bar. So for about the first... 
20 seconds. I focus almost exclusively on the message. And then the other 40 seconds, I talk about the watch. How great it is, how amazing it is. It's a great gift, all that stuff. You know why I talked about the watch? I talked about the watch in depth in this video specifically because I'm asking $149.95 for this watch. Okay? This is not a $50 item. This is not a $60 item. This, I'm asking a premium price for this item, so I need to give um, a better explanation and add value so that this watch is worth at least $150. Okay? Is this the final price? If I had time to actively manage this uh, in depth more, I probably would tweak the price a little bit somewhere between if I was going to do this and I wanted to see if that would increase my add to cart rate enough uh, to bolster my conversion rate and make more money and make it worth it, uh, I would drop it to $124.95. So instead of having like almost $100 in margin, I would have $75 in margin. So that means I would need to have a drastic increase in add to cart and conversion rate to make it worth it. Okay. There's only one way to find out and that's to testing it. And I, I, unfortunately I didn't get that far into these tests. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate right now. So I'm doing the best we can do on creating these, uh, case studies for you, but that's the, the basic structure. Okay. So here's the difference is of this stuff. I did, uh, both an open work watch and a Cuban link chain. And I did both, uh, two dad from daughter. I did, uh, two dad from son. And then I also did the bonus dad versions of them. So I did two bonus dad, love your son, two bonus dad, love your daughter. So I had eight total um, products that I tested uh, on this day. I had four open work watches, four Cuban watches. One was dad son, one was dad daughter, one was bonus son, one was bonus daughter. Now, Jim, why did you spend $42 and only have one purchase here and let everything run? Well, because all of my up funnel metrics work really, really well, like they looked good. So in an ideal world, your CPMs should be somewhere between 15 and $30. I'm well underneath on my account average right now for this day, it was down at $11 and 62 cents. So I'm well underneath where I need to be at. Now, I don't know if because Facebook is finding favor in this particular product or if CPMs have just dropped that much on Facebook. Um, this is the first set of campaigns I've run in about a month. So I don't know if it's because that's just what Facebook does now. Like these are average prices and I'm just off and I need to lower what I'm looking at um, or what. But there is a, a, a very hard relationship between what your cost per thousand impression is, your CPM, and what an acceptable cost per link click through rate is. So this is not just CTR everybody, this is CTR on that shop now button. Okay, so that's the difference. If I'm above um, 15 to, uh, am I, if I'm in that range between 15 and $30 uh, dollar CPM, I need to have at least a 1% average on a click through rate for me to get cheap enough cost per view contents. Okay, if I can't get that, then uh, it's not going to be a successful campaign on average. Are there exceptions to the rule? Sure. Uh, but on average, it's not going to work out. However, when you have below a $15 average CPM on your account that you're testing, and you can accept a below 1% total average on link click through rate. So 0.84% is totally okay when your CPM is $11.62 on average. All right, so what are we looking for on cost per content views? Right now, we really wanna see a cost per content view below $3 and in a perfect world below $2. So like this one's a pretty good look uh, from cost per view content. This one does pretty well. This one would be really good. Uh, and this one would be really good. Okay, these ones aren't great, but they're within line, so I let them run because it's below $3. If this is above $3 after at least $15 in spend, I would kill it. It's not going to happen. Okay, 
Now I move to add to cart. Add to cart should be, again, in an ideal world, uh, below $20 or below. So if I'm below $20, I'm going to let this, this Mamma Jamma run. Now you can see that on here, on Dad's Son, this was only one add to cart on day one. But I thought that we were just losing an awful lot. The reason I let this one continue to day two was I thought we were just going to be losing a lot of attribution here. And that's because my cost per view content was only $1.50. So I'm getting a lot of traffic. Now, if this had stayed into day two, then I would probably conclude that my price is just too high. So if we have really high cost per view contents and really low CTRs, like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, something around that, if you have really low CTR, that means your product isn't good. It's either your product isn't good or your ad that's showing that product off isn't good. So it's one of those two things. It's more than likely, especially if you're using image ads and it's one of our renders that clearly shows the design of the product, it's more than likely the, the phrase and the design of the message card itself. If you're doing graphic products, then it's the graphic design that's not doing well. All right. If you don't have at least this type of click-through rate, something's probably wrong with your product. Kill the ads, go back and work on your product, and go from there. If you have really good click-through rate, but really bad cost per view content, so if this is within the realm of, of normalcy, 0.8 if you got cheap CPMs like I'm looking at, um, or one if you have higher CPMs, then cost per view content needs to be around $3, okay, or less. Obviously, the, the lower the better. Um, if across the board you see things a bunch of uh, above three dollars, then it's more than likely due to your CPM cost being super high. So if this is low and this is within uh, and this is where it needs to be, but your cost per view contents are high, that means your page isn't loading. You're either getting a bunch of bot traffic, which hasn't really happened on Facebook in years, um, or your page isn't loading or having a hard time loading. Like your page speed is really bad. Now, if you are have your view content and that's within under three dollars, you got several of them under two dollars. Uh, you add the carts, you should be looking at around the twenty dollar mark. If you get into this forty dollar mark for an add to cart, more than likely that's not going to work out, and it's probably related to cost. So, if you have good traffic going to the page, but your add to cart rate is really low, which would result in a high cost per add to cart similar to this thing 28 content views only one add to cart i would let this run one more day in case some of these add to carts were bad attribution um but if it doesn't fix itself quickly in the next day i would just cut it okay because that and then that usually means your price is too high now if all of the open work watches that i were running were $41 or $0 because nobody added to cart, then I would conclude, okay, my price is too high. I need to lower the price. Make sense? Okay. But if we look, we've got open work, $7. Open work, $21. Open work, $14. So I don't have a price problem here, right? So if I if all of my open work watches look like this, where we had good traffic, and not good add to cart rate. I need to lower the price. It's the easiest thing I can do. Okay. But because I have good content views and all the other instances of the watch at that price all have good add to carts, I don't see a price problem. I see this as an attribution problem or a, a first day jitter problem. Right. And then within my pricing for where I'm looking at, $40 uh, cost for purchase is an ideal world. Okay. So that's day one. That's why I left everything run uh, on day one. So let's go to day two. Day two, no sales. That's not good. Not one sale for all of day two. So what do you do? Well, you kill the Cuban link because I don't have a hundred dollar margin on the Cuban chain. Kill the Cuban chain. Kill the bonus. So it just didn't look like it was working that well and let the rest of the stuff run. Tuesday, let's see what we got. Purchases. 
I now have five purchases. I have a nine row as on one, I have a six row as on the other. Why, why did that happen, Jim? Like this one didn't even have a sale on it until today. Now I got three purchases on it. Well, again, I think there's something wrong attribution wise with this particular product. Because if you look, I only have one initiate checkout and three purchases. And I can conclude on this day, I had three sales on this store. So it matched. So why did that happen? And my conclusion is that because I was running the exact same audience on all eight products, that the stuff, when it's running on all eight, I'm competing with myself in the auction. So by turning all this stuff out that was competing, I don't compete anymore, right? Therefore, I'm, I'm not outbidding myself. I'm getting the good traffic all in one. Now, why is it that this could work really well and this could work really well? Because it's two audiences and it is all targeting broad. The difference is, is these are targeting males because of son. These are targeting females because of daughter. Right. So it's actually it's one giant audience, but split into two males get the dad, the son version, uh, females get the daughter version. That's why that worked. OK. So now we go, all right, maybe I should scale this thing. I was getting ready to go into. Um, there we go. Got another sale there for that day. And then I was like, you know, for Thursday, I'm going to have this uh, getting ready for this mastermind. And I want to see if I go aggressive scale, what would that do? Would that do anything for me? So I bumped it up to $500 budget each. Now on here, you can see that my ROAS is not good, right? So one thing you want to take into account is with this attribution stuff on Facebook, low budgets. Facebook typically does a pretty good job of attribution, of, of saying, okay, this sale goes here, this sale goes here. On bigger budgets, however, it does not do a good job at all. I'm going to let that load for a second. So if I looked at just Facebook data on the 26th, I would have six sales. That would not be a good day. If I go on 26th, online store had $1,369, $2,155. It's a lot different than the $900 that it was tracked, right? So you have to look at MER revenue minus ad spend minus COGS gives you return on investment on a macro level and not just the micro what's showing up on Facebook ads. Okay, so we're gonna let this run one more day. Four track sales, one track sale, except we had $1,855 in sales. So again, we spent a little bit of money, made a lot more money. Okay. That's it, guys. That's our test. And now we're just uh, fiddling around with scaling techniques. Here's what I tried. I tried going from 500 to to $1,000 a day. That did not work um, on the one. It absolutely killed the dad to daughter one. So I lowered it back down to 250 and then I'm just going to focus on dad to son. Uh, I scaled dad to son from 500 to to $1,000. It did okay. Uh, slightly above break even. Second day, it did better. Uh, and then this morning I scaled it from a thousand dollars to five thousand dollars. Just see what happens. Spent about a thousand dollars, made about eight hundred dollars, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to play this game. It's also a what day is it? Tuesday. Um, Tuesdays are bad days to try to do aggressive scales. I was just impatient and I wanted to see if I had cool stuff I could show you on this video. So what's the strategy now? We're just going to run uh, open work dad son broad. Uh, for a budget of 500 bucks and see what happens over the next few days if that uh, evens out. Now I am running an audience expansion in here and you can see that um, a lot of these didn't really work out. I got one sale 
and I also got two add to carts. So I had pretty good add to cart rate. I'll probably end up killing long term this Walmart audience because again, that's above where I would like to be at. My CPM is super cheap. My click through rate's not that great though, which is causing our cost review content to be high. So we'll see what happens over time. I'm going to let it percolate a little bit. You can see our loss of attribution here. No add a cart, no initiate checkouts, but oh, here's purchases. So we'll let it run. That's barbecue. So that's instead of just broad interest, I did a, or broad no interest. I did barbecue as an interest and I did Walmart as an interest. Um, let it run, see what happens with it. I'm going to give it a couple of days, see if any, any of those uh, really pique the interest of buyers and get some consistent buyers out of it. Um, but that's Father's Day. That's my Father's Day test. If I was media buying, I would not have gone so aggressive in the scale. The $50 to $500 I would have still done um, because I've seen where if you go from 50 to 60 or 50 to 75, sometimes you, you have really the same probability of success going from $50 to $75 as you do going from $50 to $500. And that's usually a 60-ish percent chance of success. So what does that mean? That means every time you, you drastically increase the budget or increase the budget at all, then you have a decent chance of it not working out. That's why most people say, we'll just duplicate and change the budget off the duplication. Um, I wanted to test Facebook and that's all part of life and learnings that I can give you. The biggest takeaways I can tell you here are, do not sleep on the resources we give you. Okay, I literally told you what backgrounds to use, what phrases to use. I put them together. Here is the product description to use. This is the ad setup that I worked on. You can't get easier targeting than that. Try broad or barbecue based off of this data. And that goes for any dad product. Could be You can do that on the Cuban link. That's the ad video setup. It opens it. it, it start with asking a question. Go into the message itself. Uh, you can see our retention curve is I'm curious if I if it'll say when people drop off. Maybe not because that's not oh, that's not going to get specific into this particular thing. But you can see here out of a minute, about the first fifteen seconds, right? So that looks like. Through the message card, people are watching and they make a choice to either go or, or not. It works. Okay. I hope this helps. I hope it, it really, it's, it's eye-opening. Uh, it was when I first showed this to some folks uh, over the weekend. And it, it really just comes down to you have to apply. I can give you, I literally give you a winner, right? I gave you this background. I gave you this phrase. I gave you this product. I showed you how to put it together now. I'm telling you exactly what you need to do to be successful. You are the only person that can make it happen. I can't do it for you, not unless you hire a coach. You hire a coach, then they can help you walk through the steps, step by step by step by step. And if you're good enough, we got a coach that I can refer you to as well, that he will scale for you. Right? Like we... We've got as much, we're giving you as much information as we can. And at some point, you just got to pick the ball up and run with it. I believe in you. I believe that you can do this stuff, right? That's why I wanted to show it to you. There's nothing held back. Go for it. You want to take my card? Good luck. Go. Do it. You have to act, right? We all have dreams and aspirations. And if you don't act on your plans and you just get stuck in the analysis zone of things, you're never going to go anywhere. You're never, you're, if you take one step. And then the next step, and then the next step, guess what? One step a day, 1% improvement a day, you'll be so much, that's 365% growth in one year. And I just stole that from some self-motivated guy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I do hope it helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to tag me underneath this post. Uh, and as always, stay shiny out there.